Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chief Terry Monahan. I am the chief of department for the greatest police department in the greatest city in the world. Yeah. And as an organization, we're large, 55,000 employees, 36,000 uniform, 19,000 civilians. We are steeped in tradition and we are steeped in culture. But with an agency this large, there comes a time, circumstances arise, you need to change. You need to change that culture. You need to dare to change something that's been done a certain way for a long time. And that's what we had to do in 2015 when we adopted the neighborhood policing philosophy to work under for this organization. Let me, uh, why? Why do we do it? Why do we have to change? I got to take a little step back in time and talk about what the NYPD was, what this city was. 1993, a lot of young people here, you weren't around then. Some of the older people I saw in back. You know what this city was in 1993. 2,240 homicides in New York City, over 5,200 shooting incidences in this city. It was not a safe place to live. 1994, we made a change. That was the first major change. Comstat came to New York. What this did, it put commanding officers of precincts throughout the city in charge of crime. The idea that police can make a difference if they do things within the city. Broken, um, broken windows theory came into play. There was a lot of disorder throughout New York City. A lot of minor crimes. Our cops went out there and we started to enforce these crimes. Started to make arrests on it. Tried to bring order back into the city. It worked. Crime came down in the city. Crime came down dramatically in New York City throughout the 90s. As we hit the 2000s, though, it started to level off. Looked at those numbers, that uh, 2,200 homicides, that went all the way down to around 350. Those 5,200 shootings, that went down to around 1,200. But we leveled. And as an organization, our culture said, well, we made a lot of arrests. We did a lot of stops. If we do more, crime will continue to drop. So that's what started happening in the 2000s. More arrests for minor violations, more arrests for smoking pot on the streets, jumping turnstiles, more stops. We ended up making over 400,000 arrests a year and stopping over 700,000 people in the city. This was causing a major divide between the cops and the communities that we serve out here. And crime wasn't going down. 2014 came. 2014 had to be the worst year in the history of this country for law enforcement. Starts in July in this city, out in Staten Island, Eric Gardner. Eric Gardner was a man, cops went to arrest him for illegally selling cigarettes on the street. A struggle ensues, Mr. Gardner dies. A month later, in Ferguson, Missouri, I know everyone knows about Ferguson, Missouri, Michael Brown goes into a store, he grabs some products, he runs out, he steals it, cop approaches him, a struggle ensues, Michael Brown gets shot, he dies. The common denominator in both, the officers involved were white, the person who died was black. Major demonstrations throughout this entire country. Ferguson, places were burning down, there were shootings going on all over the place. Here in this city, 35,000 people marching through the streets of Manhattan, screaming some of the most vile things I've ever heard, hurled at police officers who were trying to protect them at the time. Comments asking for the death of police officers, saying, let's put wings on pigs. It really was a, a low time for cops, and it hit that lowest point here on December 20th of 2014. That's when two of our police officers, Win Jin Lu and Rafael Ramos, were assassinated in their car by a man who came up from Baltimore who was fueled by the rhetoric he was hearing. This was a bad time here in the city. We needed to change. There was a lot of problems going on. There was a huge divide between the cops and the communities they served. Morale for our cops, about as low as I'd ever seen it. We had to change. That's when we came up with the concept of neighborhood policing. It's really a simple concept when you break it down. It's the idea is you're putting the cops in charge. Three goals, three, three things we wanted to accomplish with this. One, get rid of that divide, bring the cops and community together increase the cops' morale, and continue to drive down crime. Because I don't care how many relationships we have, how well people know us, if you're not safe in your home, if you're not safe going to work, if you're not safe going to worship, we failed as a department. So we had to accomplish all three missions. We had been a very top-down organization. People who used to sit in my seat would go and they would set a rule 
and say, this is what's got to be done for the entire city. We all know this is a diverse city. What happens in Harlem isn't what happens in Tribeca, isn't what happens in Brown, Brownshurst. We needed to be able to police separately. We needed to take the power out of headquarters and put it with the cops who are on the street each and every day. And that was the whole concept. We kept the same cops now in the same neighborhoods. Every day they came to work. In the past, the cop would be working in one side of the precinct one day, the next day somewhere else, the next day he'd go to a Yankee Stadium for a detail or come down to Lower Manhattan and watch Trump Tower. These were the different events they'd have to do. They never got that connection with the people that they worked with, the people that worked in those communities. So we changed it. We put everyone back into the neighborhood, and every time they came into that neighborhood, that's where they worked. Those cops stayed there every day, building that relationship back and forth with the communities that they served. We had to be able to train these cops properly. Because, like I said, I want this cop not just to uh, kiss babies and shake hands. He's got to solve crime. He has to know how to keep the people in that neighborhood safe. So we train those cops the same way we train every detective in this department, teaching them how to investigate crime, how to be able to go up to you if there's a burglary in your building. What do I need to do? What investigative steps do I do? Get rid of those silos that used to exist between the detective bureau and the patrol cops. This way they all work together. And most importantly, work together with the communities. There are meetings that get held all the time, community council meetings, everything where you see the guys in the nice white shirts like me that come up, stand in front of a crowd, speak to you like this, and the cops sit all the way in the back. What does that do? What relationship building does that have? We started a thing called Build the Block. In the Build the Block, it was the cops' responsibility. They ran these meetings. Bosses were not allowed at them. It was a community that they served, and those cops sitting together, working hand in hand, figuring out what the problems were. Does this work? Did it work? 2015, we said we'd leveled off, sitting at 350 and 1,200. Last year, the lowest levels we'd ever hit. 298 homicides, 754 shootings. A dramatic drop-off. This sort of policing works. Putting discretion in the hands of our cops. If we want our cops to be trusted and respected by the community, us as bosses, the hierarchy had to trust and respect our cops. And that's what we did. So how do we go further? How do we get this city even further? How do we dare to get those numbers I just said down even lower? It's a shared responsibility. We as a police department can't do it alone. It starts with everyone sitting here in this room, everyone that's watching this on the screen. You can make that difference. Get to know your police officers. We are a lot more than just a blue uniform. Each and every cop is an individual. He's a human. Every community is a human. We have to look at the humanity that exists between, between all of us. I take this off, I go home to my family, just like that person in the community that I'm dealing with every day goes home to theirs. That's what this is all about. So when you leave here today, there's cops out on the street, you get back to your neighborhood, start with a hello. Start with a good morning. That conversation, that quick back and forth, that's what's going to make a difference. We all work together. This city, it's the safest it's ever been. It can only get better as we work together. So I thank you for inviting me here today. Thank you, dude. And let's all dare to make this city even safer. Thank you.